people all over the world think that when they litter, it's only one piece of plastic, and that's not going to cause any issues. However, this is one piece too many. There are approximately 6.7 million particles of plastic per square kilometer in Lake Ontario. This is having a detrimental effect on nature, and it circles back into your food and drinking water. When microplastics enter your body, they harm your tissues and or Do you really want to be able to see plastics and other chemicals? We're going to be showing you how these microplastics have a massive effect on the environment and the future of our planet. Hi, I'm Spencer. I'm Adeen. My name is Arjan. And I'm Daniel. And, and we, we are, are the Microplastic Exterminators! You may be wondering, what are microplastics? A microplastic is any plastic that is less than 5 millimeters in diameter. There are two types of microplastics, primary and secondary. Primary microplastics are from commercial use, which include fishing nets, clothing, and cosmetics. Furthermore, microbeads, which are less than 1 millimeter in their largest dimension, account for 14% of all microplastics in Lake Ontario. Through the gradual wearing down of synthetic textiles, especially polyester and fleece, fibers break down and enter our water supply. However, alternatives that emit little to no microfibers, such as cotton, are available. Secondary microplastics are created when large particles, otherwise referred to as macroplastics, such as plastic water bottles and single-use straws, break down. This fragmentation is due to photodegradation, which is sunlight exposure, physical, biological, and chemo degradation. We also had the wonderful opportunity to interview the manager of the Wastewater Treatment Center in, in Alton, John Duan. The region takes care of and is responsible for all the wastewater and water treatment. Microplastics is, is a new and emerging um, issue. So microplastics is defined as basically less than five million. I know is that the a big problem has been microbeads. Many people argue that even if plastic manages to get into our water, we can still remove it using the wastewater treatment. But as we learned from John Duong, and then when you move, go to the secondary treatment, uh, microplastics are further removed by. 86% to 99.8%. Even if 1.1% of plastics vanish again to our waterways, it can still lead to hundreds of thousands of million plastics. There are many issues that are linked to this problem. Some of the plastic that pass through our gastrointestinal tract into the bloodstream and damage organs by discharging hazardous chemicals. Scientists say that when they accumulate, they can lead to conditions such as cancer and heart disease. Furthermore, microplastics more than 100 nanometers in, in size are known as nanoplastics. Nanoplastics can cross, can cross cellular membranes and affect the functioning of cells. Nanoplastics can cause stress and changes in behavior. Studies have shown that there are a lot of harmful chemicals in microplastics which lead to metabolic syndrome. This increases the risk of being diagnosed with diseases such as heart disease and type 2 diabetes. In addition, microplastics even cross the blood-brain barrier and there's some evidence that it can lead to birth defects and miscarriage during pregnancy. Furthermore, styrene, which is a chemical found in plastic, has been proven to lead to nervous system problems and hearing loss. Finally, there has been a high concentration of carcinogenic chemicals found in plastic and this leads to cancer. Furthermore, fish and other marine creatures mistake them for food and eat them. Also, research has found that humans consume 5 grams of microplastics per week. Shrimp and other water feeders eat sediment on the ocean floor, but microplastics get mixed in with the sea. When the creatures are eaten, the plastic gets transferred through the food chain in a process called trophic transfer. This means that the animals don't even need to consume it. Microplastics are one of the biggest forms of our soil and can permanently affect these ecosystems. This can greatly affect the plant's growth. There is also plastic in our soil, which trickles down into our groundwater, so towns and rural areas that rely on it could be the just also the just microplastics. After realizing how massive this problem was, we visited a section of Lake Ontario and looked for any plastic items that were not disposed of properly. We wanted to make sure that our action lasted, so. We made an Instagram page and website educating our community. 
We also wrote a letter to our local MPP and MP about increasing the amount of recycling boxes around Oakville. Furthermore, we wrote a letter to some of the main contributors to this problem, fast food chains such as Tom Hortons and McDonald's to recommend they reduce the amount of plastic they use. Finally, we submitted an article to a newspaper editor to educate the public about this problem. Microplastics are a massive problem. Our team has come up with many solutions to rectify this issue, but we can't save the world on our own. What can you do to help us humans, animals, and the environment? Well, if you see plastic on the ground, pick it up. You can also minimize the amount of single-use plastics that you buy. You can reduce the amount of plastic wrapped food you buy as well. In addition, buy natural fibers like cotton and reduce the amount of laundry you do weekly. Also, you can buy laundry balls and filters that reduce the amount of microfibers that break off clothes by 60 to 80%. Lastly, reduce, reuse, recycle. What you do today can ensure a better future tomorrow. Together, we can accomplish anything. You have the power to reduce your plastic consumption. Drink your plastic habits and keep our water safe.